Hi and welcome everyone. In this part, we will talk about dispersive channels in frequency domain. What's it? How to model it? And what are the problems in this case? And how scientists and researchers and engineers around the world are trying to solve it? So, dispersive channel. Time domain, some people call it frequency selective channel. Frequency selective channel. And in frequent, when, when uh, this is time dispersion, okay? Time dispersion. A frequency dispersion, some people call it time selective channel. Why frequency selective channel? Why time selective channel? I will explain it briefly here for you. In the case of time dispersion, how does the channel look like in time domain? The channel. This is power and this is time. The channel you have at time zero, at time zero let's say you have the strongest signal which is line of sight. At time uh, at time t0 plus some delay t, t0 plus uh, some delay tau1 let's call it you have another signal you, you get it from a reflection for an object that's relatively close to the receiver and after a certain t tau2 uh, you get another reflection and here you get another reflection and here you get another reflection. So basically you get in practice, in practical wireless channel, you get a decaying, not evaporating channel in time domain. This is time. If you get the frequency domain of this, the frequency domain, get F, F, T of this. This is how you get. This is signal. Uh, what do you get? You get something in the frequency domain like this. Again, this is power. This is power and this is frequency. How, what do you get? You get something like this. What's this? Frequency selective. What it means, frequency selective? You select, the, the response of your channel is selective, is selectively good and selectively bad at certain frequencies. This is why they call it selective. Selectively good, for example, here the channel is good over this band, but the channel is extremely bad over this. The channel here is extremely bad. The channel here is why? What do we call this? We call these deep fades. Deep fade. It means the channel is a very in a very bad situation, very bad uh, construction. If your data is here, you are unlucky because your signal will get multiplied, get affected by a suppressing power amplifier, kind of. Imagine this is 0.1 and your signal is 1. Multiply it by this, it becomes 0.1. Imagine it's something that's suppressing your power, killing you. And imagine you are here, 1.5, and your signal is 1. one, one. It's, imagine it's 2. It's multiplying it by 2. So it's selective based on the frequency. Now, this is time, this is case 1, time dispersion channel, which is called the frequency selective channel. In frequency domain, this is in time domain. Let's go to the frequency D uh, dispersion. Frequency dispersion. How does it happen first? You have a transmitter, you have a receiver. The receiver is moving in a train or in a plane. Not only this, and all the reflections, most of the reflections are coming from very high speed device, uh, very high speed vehicles, like planes, trains, cars, Ferrari, whatever. Like the signal gets hits here and gets reflected with a different frequency. So suppose you send your signal at frequency F1. Okay? You send it at F1. It hits here uh, uh, like uh, a mountain and gets reflected. But unfortunately, the receiver is moving with very high speed. So by the because of the movement in the channel, the movement can be caused by the receiver because it's moving or by the obstacles, by the object. Between the transmitter and receiver, the objects are also moving. 
like cars, trains, planes, whatever. When it hits the train and gets reflected of it, the frequency changes. Uh, so the receiver, instead of receiving the data over the same frequency, if one, what will happen? It, it will receive kind of this. At F, at, at F0, it receives this bunch of waveforms. At F0 plus something, delta F, you receive another uh, bunch of rays in frequency domain. And here, another bunch of rays, another bunch of rays. So, and it's kind of became sometimes, sometimes it's not. So basically, you get something like this. When you take the f of t of this and you want to draw it in, uh, sorry, the i of t, now we want to go to time. This is, this is frequency. Everybody agrees with me, and this is power. Here we will draw power and we will put frequency, uh, time, sorry. How do you move from frequency? From frequency, if this is frequency domain. How do you move from frequency to time? I of t. I of t takes you to the time. You draw this, you will get something like this. So this is time selective. Why? Because at certain time spots, the channel acts like a power amplifier. It improves your signal. And at certain time spots, like here, like here, like here, you have deep fades. Suppresses your signal. If you transmit your data over here, you will get killed. Your data will get lost. You will not be able to recover it or before it. If you transmit it over here, it will be very problematic. That's why you have a limiting bit error rate performance in these cases. Because the bit error rate performance is an average of sending thousands of bits. You get this. How do you get that average um, saturated at certain bit error rate level? It's because of these deep fades. If you didn't have these deep fades and all what you have is amplifier, your performance would be even sometimes close to the additive white Gaussian noise. Because not only you have, you, you have noise, but also you have something that amplifies your signal. Because the signals can be added at the receiver constructively. If these two signals, you add them together at the receiver, the signal will become like this, because they are aligned. But if you receive the first signal like this, and the second signal like this, and you add it, it becomes like this. This destructive, this constructive, this cancels each other, this builds on top of each other, amplifies the signal, boosts the signal. And this is what we want. Okay. The, the duration of the channel where it amplifies, not it suppresses. But we cannot get rid of it. This is what we get. If you want to get rid of it, you will need to use some complex pre-processing algorithms at the transmitter. But in this case, what do you call the channel? You call it time selective channel. When do you get this case? When the, when the channel is mobile. And in, 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 the, in the time dispersive, frequency selective channel. Your, the delay spread here on the channel, tau max, let's call it tau max, is much greater than the time of the symbol. And here, for the frequency, let's separate them here like this. For the case of frequency, here, the frequency spread here is greater than the bandwidth of the symbol, of one symbol, the frequency spread, and here T max greater than the T S. These are the conditions at which you get this dispersion. But you now understand physically how you get this channel, and you understand by some parameters how you get this channel, and you understand its effect on your data because this will need, this will map to the data symbols. If you have a picture of X. And you are sending it here, so x1 will be something like that, and x2 is be hitting here, hitting here, hitting here. So x0 is hitting here. Is it a bad thing or a good thing? I think it's a bad thing because this this part of the channel is in deep phase. But if I were to transmit my signal here, I would be more lucky, uh, and my data most probably will be decoded successfully. So this is in general giving you. Uh, the meaning of wireless <coughs> channels and how they are different and this is what you will see in the slides that I will share with you with some more de uh, in-depth details and in-depth explanation but in general uh, you should get the picture here you should get like this is a summary of what happens now let's go back to the 
to what will happen what will happen when you transmit over a frequency selective channel usually when you uh, sorry we already started selective channel or now frequency dispersion please please pay attention to the naming because sometimes it's very confusing people name it uh, case one time dispersion or time spreading equal to frequency selective channel frequency dispersion frequency spreading equal to time selective channel when does this happen? This happens when T max, the delay in the channel, is greater than the simple duration of your signal. And then this one does this happen when the bandwidth of your signal is less than the spread in the frequency domain inside your channel. So now it means that now when uh, when you when you send your signal at a certain frequency, you receive multiple reflections of it in the frequency domain. How do you handle this? Any any clever thought on how to handle this? To me, I would think like this should be handled just like the way we handle time dispersion. We use like the and the 50 and we handle it. Yes? Same here. If you don't want to use I50 and I50, but everything is the opposite of what you did there. Okay, everything is the opposite of what you did there. There you assumed your data to be in the frequency domain. Here you have to assume it in time domain and put the F50 at the transmitter and the I50 at the receiver. Everything is the opposite of the case of time dispersion. You need to process your data in time domain, although the dispersion in frequency domain. But where is the catch here? Why no? Why, did it, why aren't we doing this in the standard, in the practical technologies? Nobody's doing this in the practical technology when you have frequency spreading. Why? The reason is because we usually not only have frequency spreading, but time spreading together. We call it doubly dispersive channel. Doubly, doubly dispersive channel. Dispersion in time, dispersion in frequency, and handle them. How do you come up with a system? that can handle both of them simultaneously at the time. I explained to you how to handle it if you, if you have only just frequency dispersion, if you have frequency dispersion, time selective channel, and you want me to handle the multi net, I would just build a system like OFDM, but the opposite, everything the opposite. Instead of starting with I50, I would start with I50. Instead of processing the time, instead of processing in frequency, I would process in time, and things will be normalized and easy equalization. But when you have them together, how can you handle this? This is a question mark that researchers are trying to answer. What's the state of the art? The state of the art in this, researchers introduced something called OEFS. Orthogonal time frequency spreading signal that can handle both these time and the frequency together. So the point here is to map to map your data into 2D structure. In OTFS, you have 2D structure and you have two-dimensional I50 or O50 or something sim simplotic. Uh, fast Fourier transform. It means instead of having I50 or F50 in one dimension, you have it in two dimensions. Until until then, until this, everything is fine. Okay, it looks a smart idea. So it looks a great idea. But unfortunately, everything gets messy at the receiver side. Everything gets extremely hectic, extremely problematic at the receiver side because you need to use extremely complex equalizers. What's the reason for that? The, the idea, the thought of the authors, everything, it's, it's obvious that it's really very clever. It's really very good way of doing it. And it's gonna be amazing. But where is the problem? The problem, when you get doubly dispersive channel, how, how, how would the channel look like? The channel will be something like this. So you have here, you have here uh, time, and here frequency, and here power, okay? At time T1, T2, T3, 
T4. And T5, T6, it can be 10 taps, it can be, huh? it depends on the channel. And here at T1, at, at, T, at T1, this is T0, at T1, you have another dimension in the frequency domain going inside the wall, in the wall, like this, like this, like this, like this. For each spreading in time, you have another spreading in the frequency. And this spreading can be in the form of samples in the frequency domain. And each one is independent of the other. So what type of equalizer you will use to handle this? Just tell me. Just tell me. You have two dimensions, spreading in time and the frequency, and here is the power. At each time slot, you have, this is spreading, like, this is spreading here in time. At each frequency, you have spreading in time, and at each time, you have spreading in frequency. What type of equalizer can you use here? The equalizer can be being researched. People are doing research on them. Are really complex. Really complex. So this is a question mark. And that's why ODFS was proposed to the 5G standard to include it in the 5G technology and include it inside your mobile phones. But unfortunately, the standard body rejected it. And the reason why they rejected it is because when they investigated how they should design the receiver, the receiver is found out to, to be extremely complex, extremely sophisticated. It means when it's complex, sophisticated, if you deploy it in your phone, and it, it, it will cause your battery to drain very well, like very quickly. Uh, I mean, yes, but like, what's the point of having something complex in my receiver? And imagine how many chips over the world you need to print and design and ship. This is not like uh, a straightforward or simple decision when you want to change a waveform at the mobile handset. It's not a simple decision because it's going to impact all the phones in the world. And your phones are going to deploy this algorithm and use this algorithm. So if it's not efficient, why should I proceed with that from the beginning? So what we want to do now, we want some clever ideas that maybe can use machine learning, AI, or some clever ways of designing it at the receiver so that we can really, we can really what? Make, make this possible. I think this can be in 6G or 7G. If someone comes with a better idea of how to handle this interference at the receiver uh, with less complexity, uh, by doing some processing at the transmitter joined with the receiver in a way that doesn't drain your battery, doesn't complicate things too much, this can be a contribution, an idea that's gonna impact the world. Each and every mobile phone in 6G, for example, is going to use your algorithm to solve this. This is bending problem, bending. Nobody was able to solve till now. Nobody, nobody. Although people was, were very optimistic about ODFS, ODFS, it, it's good structure at the transmitter, but it's messy structure at the receiver, complex, sophisticated. We want someone, yes, with, from the direction of ODFS or something different, but change the structure in a way that you make it easy to equalize at the receiver, just the way you are doing with OTM. The other bad thing about ODFS, it, it doesn't stand alone, kind of. It's not a standalone technology. They integrate the thing with OFDM. So you still need to use OFDM which doesn't make sense because what's the point of breaking a new waveform? I want to already replace OFDM, but the reason why they tried their best to integrate it with OFDM is to fit with the standard. Because OFDM has been used in 4G and 5G, and all the mobile phones around the world, they use OFDM and they have the OFDM receiver, so they don't want somebody to come and tell them, like, we don't, we, are, we don't want to use your receiver, we don't want to use your chips, please design new chips for us. So we, they, they try, the OTFS kind of tried to fit in the already existing standard, which is not always the right way to do. Maybe sometimes this disruptive technology, great technologies, sometimes they have to stand 
alone by themselves and prove that they can work perfectly excellent without the need to integrate with any previous technology. So be forward compatible, you don't need to be backward compatible unless you want to fit to fit in within something already existing. So this is the story and we know where the state of the art researchers are bending, where are they stopping, where what they are trying to do is this, handling this. If you solve this problem, you will be able to enjoy high speed internets high speed internet speed inside the airplanes, inside the trains, inside cars with moving well 300 km per hour, 400 km per hour. The airplane is moving sometimes between 500, the train 500 km per hour, the airplane 900, 1000, something like this. So imagine getting internet from your tower, from yourself, if you design a very good technology that can handle this mess here. OFDM is very sensitive to uh, frequency spread. OFDM, the enemy of OFDM is frequency spread. The enemy, you, you know what enemy? It kills it. So due to this, they make sure to design very complex equalizers at the receiver that can handle this uh, uh, spread problem or this or that. But OFDM at a certain point fails when you are moving with a very high speed car doesn't function, it doesn't work. It's difficult. Uh, if you are in a train, there is no OFDM. If you are in a plane, no internet even. If you are in a rocket going uh, in a journey to moon or Mars or this, uh, there is no something like a high speed internet or things like those. So this is what we are trying to achieve in the future and this is a good research direction for anyone who wants to build solid impactful research that can affect the world. Here, here, you need to look here. So thank you everyone. If you have any questions you can send them to me by email.